that brings us to the guy. It's a pleasure to have you here at all times. You feel me? Um, I, 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 get, I would let Raising Canaan finish for the season so I can binge it. I saw a couple spoilers, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, it's Mr. Power After Hours himself. It's the guy. Jeff told us, brother. What's going on? How you feeling? Family, family. What's good? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Clear, brother. yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Shout out to Knicks on one. You already know the five. Sean, Brill, Breeze, Playback Gang, all the gangs in the building. I'm, I am going to censor myself as much as possible because I am fed up. I'm fed up. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that old school? I got you. Man, let them cr- let it fly. <laughs> Y'all remember that old school? That old school commercial i'm mad as hell and i'm not going to take it anymore i feel like this is how all nba fans should feel about officiating because over the last two seasons it's been completely unacceptable bro completely unacceptable and i understand that sports sometimes can be a microcosm of society where we don't really care until it happens to us but this is the one situation where Fans have been talking about the officiating being ass for a minute. We watched when Braun got clearly hacked against against the Celtics, when he clearly got hacked on, on the arm, to the point where Pat Bev had to eat a tech at a five for breaking out the camera and bringing instant replay. Instant replay for the fans and for the players on the court. One of the best memes that could have ever come from that season was Pat Bev keeping it real because that's what we do online. This is the era where we don't got to wait until Sports Center. We don't got to wait until the next national game to litigate bad calls. We can litigate bad calls in real time. And there's been an abundance of real shitty calls over the last few years. And we watched a masterclass of malpractice with officiating against the Knicks and the Rockets last night. I echo what everybody else says. Be consistent. If we were tur- if we were turning it back to the 94 finals, if we was hand checking, if it was no blood, no foul, cool. Let it be like that on both sides because you can gamble more on defense when you're allowed to be way more physical and get away with contact that's being called as a foul on the other side. I, I know about the 33 to 12 free throw dispar- disparity some of that is our legit fouls, but it's only more intensified when you see that there's a clear discrepancy. You can call it. Tibbs got his first tech of the season because Taj got called for a high five foul, which in the park, you, you know, you're gonna, you're probably going to have to argue that. But they say in the NBA, your hand, you can high five on a shot and it's not a foul. And they called it on the three-point shot. I believe Japarri Smith. You got Dylan McCaffrey running the halfback sweep on Jalen Brunson. Dylan Pacheco shoulders him. And that's a blocking foul. And this goes to the point where I say fans need to be more vocal about the horrible officiating. There's been tons of calls this season alone where the player initiates the contact with their shoulder into a moving defender and it's called a blocking foul i i I need to see the rule book to see what blocking is what versus what a charge is but if you initiate the contact with your shoulder i don't think you should get the credit of a foul if they're stationed if they're moving if they're moving and they're into you and you're trying to get off that's basketball but if you're initiating while the while the defender is moving if you're initiating a shoulder I don't think you should get credit for that as an and one. At best, that should be no call. They could even call that an offensive depending on what the rules are. But this is the consistent inconsistency, right? And we're also hey, living hey, in... Let's keep that same energy for Julius, though. What'd you say? Hey, me shit. Let's keep that same energy for Julius, though, because... I want him to get them Dylan Brooks calls when he lowers his shoulders and throws people out the way. From- I don't care what they do. They need to make it consistent. It's not being called consistently. And this is what I'm saying. I've seen that same play get called an offensive foul. I've seen that same Dylan Brooks play get called an offensive foul. I've seen it get a charge. And I feel like you can tell the difference between bully ball and NFL. 
I think you could tell the I think you could tell the difference. Like there's no there's no world where you watch that in real time and say Dylan Brooks should be getting a call there. Some of Julius's physicality, yeah. You could say that could have been called one way, that could have been called another way. But you, if you watch how they call it for the whole game, if they're calling it consistent and letting them get it, then you're playing within the same rules. Now we're not playing in the same rules. And it's a problem that I've had with officiating for a minute where the officials start to make the game about themselves. And this is where it's taken away, I speak from the fan perspective, right? Think about it like this. Imagine 2019, you in an IMAX theater, you watching Endgame. Captain America just shot the fair wood with, with, with Thanos. He gets the he gets the call. He gets the call from his man, his man Falcon on your left. Everybody's coming through the portal. I got my gang. The Black Order is right behind Thanos. He got his gang. My man Cap calls Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, for the real ones. He calls Avengers Assemble, and they meeting in the middle. All of a sudden, one of the ushers pauses the movie, turns the lights on, and says, after review, I do not think Cap was worthy to hold the hammer, so we're going to cut the movie off right now. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't going to show the fight. The movie is over. How would you react? You would be in an uproar because you didn't come to see an usher. You came to see those movie stars. You came to see an event. Yeah, I get it with the Rockets fans. They probably, you know, if it was on the other side, it's like a wrestler. It's like a wrestler who cheated to win a title. You roll out the ring. You run up to the ramp. You talk your shit at the top of the ramp. And you get to the back because you know you got away with one. But even if you're a fan who pays this money and you pay for these tickets, you were going to get treated to free basketball. You were going to get literally more than what your money was worth that night to play five more minutes for two teams that are down players who are playing with their bench players and are playing their hearts out. You don't end the game like that. And there's too many times where that happens. And I heard some people talking about Jalen Brunson and how, why did he launch himself that way? Have you been watching the NBA for the last three or four years? 35 footers are layups for some people. Though, and, and, and watching it on replay, seeing Aaron Holiday do the shot put, I can say, okay, seeing him shoot it like that, yeah, that's probably not going to go in. I've seen crazier. And when you look at what Ed Malloy said in his last-minute report, Jalen Brunson did what he had to do. The only reason why it even looked crazy, quote-unquote, is because Aaron Holiday made unnatural moves with his entire body. I know him, he probably pop lock and do all of that stuff. He probably one of them dancing. He the dancing Holiday because the way he had that body control to, to stiff arm Jalen with his offhand, to move his legs to the side, and to make that incidental contact land, both of them landed comfortably. Jalen didn't land in, in, his, in his landing area, and he was able to backpedal all with maintaining his balance. You could tell there wasn't nothing there. But they call that foul, they call that foul and take away what was an amazing game. And that's something that we just can't have. And in this era of accountability, we should not have more accountability on social media than the NBA has in public for the officiating. I know if a, a, a player argues a foul or argues any call on the court, he's going to get a tech. Coaches, they're going to get a tech. They complain about the refs afterwards. They're going to get fined. And I understand it's part of you don't want them to manipulate the refs. Ironically, you don't want them to manipulate the refs because you don't want to skew outcomes of games, but they're doing it all their own. And we don't know. Like, I know people who, who are actual NBA officials, and they say there is a disciplinary action. There are fines. There are. I heard Steve Javi on, on Barton Hahn where he said, their pay is effective because if if you if you're having a bad game as a ref or if you're a bad ref, you're not going to be put on for the playoffs. You're not going to be put on for the finals and those. So that is where their corrective action takes place. But the average fan doesn't know that. I think there needs to be transparency. There needs to be accountability because then you start to spark fans theories and speculations over what the hell is going on, especially when you have these leagues that are now partners with sports betting. 
Let's just call it what it is. People have been saying games are rigged for decades before you could just click on an app and start betting and live betting and doing all types of betting from, from the comfort of your own home. So when you have this specter of gambling partnered and officially affiliated with your with your sports leagues, you do have a right. It is it is incumbent upon you to make sure things are on the up and up. And I'm not and, and I'm not going I'm not speculating. I'm not I'm not insinuating. I'm telling you what the speculation is from fans in general. I I watch I'm on gambling Twitter. I watch when someone ain't credited for a rebound and you see you would have thought Tag got got all his cousins and an ar army of people on here letting letting the clips fly. Letting the clips fly about about you see he grabbed the rebound. How is that recorded as a team rebound? Cuz guess what? Everybody's involved and everybody's making money. So that is shifting. That is shifting a lot of money changing hands. And they're putting pressure on statisticians, the NBA, these sports books, everybody. Because effect, this is affecting the outcomes of the games. And this is affecting it financially and competitively. Because let's, let's be real. We're not going to care about this game after the All-Star break. Once, once, once the team gets back together and everybody's 100%. We may not care about it. But we may care about it in April if uh, 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 the difference between two seed and three seed or three seed and four seed or four and, or five and six is one game. And it was the one game that got decided by the zebras and not by the players on the court. These are the type of things when you start affecting the competitive landscape, because you know, you, you, you bet your money, you lose your money, whatever. I don't have that much. I don't have that much like sympathy for you. Although I do believe oh, I it should be money. credit. I <laughs> da, thought you were about to say money, Jeff. Don't do that. Don't do that, Jay. Don't do that. I see your I see your I see your profile pic, brother. Your your you got a Ginzu Sharp hairline. That's money. That's at least 50. That's that's that damn. I didn't know the prices went up like that. That's when you start patting your pockets like Usher in the um the Super Bowl. You start doing the Usher Super Bowl dance. Like, let's not do that. And it's in black and white. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. I told you, man. We 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 not we not ringing you up. I didn't want to ring nobody up today. Why you think why you think my brother short ain't here? He knew the ring up was here. So 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 money man, money man Jay, let's not do this. Let's not do this. Hey, bro. Man, Manscaped is a hell of a product. That is all I will say. Uh, look, product. look, I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. And when you have your butler giving you a lineup, Alfred never did that for Bruce. Alfred never did that. Alfred did everything. Alfred, Alfred bust guns for Bruce. He ain't give him a lineup. So that you it's different. It's different for you, bro. I, I tip my cap. I tip my cap, bro. I tip my cap. A salute to you. But yeah, man, at the end of the day, I'm not worried about the Knicks. I'm, I, it's hard for me to analyze these games when they're playing with a triage squad. At this point, these are all like simulations to see where, where these players are going to fit in when they get the whole squad back. So I'm not really worried. I think you got to get... When when Dante DiVincenzo is leaving a game with an apparent hamstring injury, when you're playing with with a uh, bare bones squad, that's when I said the minute he went out, I said we gotta get this game. The Knicks gotta get this game because now it's costly. Like like if if they would have lost that Memphis game when when Jalen turned turned his ankle, now it's double. It's compounded. I would have rather them lost it on the court, but it makes it even worse when they lose it. They don't even get the opportunity to go the five more minutes to see who was the best that night. The, the Everybody in that arena got robbed. The fans got robbed of an awesome game. And you know it's bad when the consensus around national media, local media, was that it was the worst. Not just a bad call. They call it the worst call they've ever seen. And we've seen some bad calls across sports across sports man so we're not wilding i think if you if this is a game where you want to talk about the referees cost the game this is a prime example i don't think anybody will anybody will make fans feel bad about it and if they do just check their check their tweets check their social i'm sure there's a game where they will they you know everybody's i'm not a ref person until you're a ref person and they and it goes against your team that's the, the, the it, it is the most cliche thing i don't even say that anymore if i got something to say about the rest i'm gonna say it about the rest because it's tangible if you if a ref listen that call against jalen brunson if that was in the park we'd either be shooting for the ball somebody would be shooting the fair one 
or they shooting made you look it's so there was only there's only three options for calling that type of foul especially if the game is time tied and it's you're playing like straight 21 or straight 25 there's only three options or y'all gonna argue and somebody gotta go home because they know they gotta be home before the lights go the lights come on because they gonna get they, it's gonna get crazy when the parents come outside and, and start to embarrass you and, and tell you, you gotta you gotta come home right like this is this is the type of stuff that i'm talking about and i just hope like at, at this point i'm like yo the knicks just gotta get to the all-star break they gotta hop in the hyper they gotta hop in the back to tanks they gotta hype in the, the hop in their hyperbaric chambers and everybody just get healthy because it's all sweet now for the league when the knicks don't have their whole squad but everybody's coming back and the order is going to be restored in my opinion i just hope they don't lose as much ground as they as they built up that 14 and 2 run was way more important than I thought it was going to be a month ago because they they have succumbed to the injury bug but I don't think it's going to be a problem I just hate investing my time in games for them to end in that way I that that's just me that's just me as a fan and I do think that the NBA has an officiating problem that they need to solve one way or another I don't think adding more of a re replay and all of that I don't think that's the answer because I, I'll say this if you would have told me a year ago that I would have been clamoring for VAR instead of instead of NBA replays, I would have thought it was crazy. And for those of you who watch soccer, you know that's their review system, and it's been highly criticized by by soccer fans. But there, at some point, you have to be able to correct bad calls. Like you make that foul call, you watch it on the replay because the replay was triggered by whether or not it happened at before the end of the quarter you see that it's a bad call and say well we they don't got a challenge so we move the game is over we move that shouldn't happen and we shouldn't have been there in the first place because that call shouldn't have been made and, it, and I think it's actually insane that people are starting to put, try to put uh, dots together with this global dude and how he, <laughs> you can't even say, you can't even say this is like highway robbery because apparently he's police. Apparently he's police. And, and, and I'll wrap this all up by saying, Sean, guess what his favorite show is? I'm scared. Oh my goodness. You, it, the answer is in the question. Guess what his favorite show is? Just don't say the office. Just please don't no. say the office. Think about it. We how did we start off this and how did we end this? No way. It's this power. It's power. His favorite show mm -hmm. is Power. No. So I can understand why some crazy shit happened at the end of the game. This man likes drama. This man likes the like, like stuff that happens that you don't you don't see coming. Hey, him and Courtney Kemp must have been in the booth like, yo, this is about to be flames. Watch, watch. New York is gonna turn up. I got. I, I thought Fifty was gonna narrate at the end or something like that. Like this. At this point, that dude, I do not want to see. I only want referees that got hairlines officiating Knicks games from this point forward. If you're balding, no shots. No shots, my, my brothers out there. Like, yo, I, I, I feel y'all in the struggle. I support y'all. But no, you got to have a hairline of call against this point forward. If you don't got a hairline, if you're not intact, if, you, if you're if you not doing something like like wear, wear a headband, something. I don't want no more bald refs officiating Knicks games from this point forward, and especially not bald ref fans that watch power. Because he must have he must have been messed up after raising Caden, and he must have still been crazy. It must have still been crazy. So, yeah, man more transparency be aware because right now adam silver your product is your product is starting to be stepped on your, your product is stepped on right now your product is, is getting a town stomped on so if you care something something needs to be done shout out to nick someone i appreciate y'all love to everybody else Jay Nikki, let me hold twenty dollars because I know that's like twenty cents to you. Yeah, I just I just want to get lunch. You know, Uber Eats be going crazy, my brother. Salute to y'all. Peace. Hey man. Hey bro, ain't the, don't the company you work for got an app? <laughs> don't the company you work for got an app? 
Damn. I'm a college oh, player, I love it. I love yeah, it. Jay, why you go that way? Why you go that way? I'm a contract tour. I don't listen. It's I a lot of stammering. I don't have it's a lot of stammering for a yes or no question, my brother. I don't have it. I work for myself. I don't have an app. Hey, he wasn't ready for you to return serve like that. Yo, 